Our story begins very innocently, as most ghost stories do. You see, it was just the critic and the common man recording a podcast as usual. Nothing to see, very little to hear, as always, not much insight. For even though they were across country, their souls, an unusual bond, podcasters together, and their review that was perfectly splendid of the haunting of Bly Manor. What's going on, everybody? Chris, please, please edit a little ghost like flying right out of my finger. Uh, Casper, what's going on, or, everybody? Uh, more like, uh, like Resident Evil style. That's not a ghost. Uh, we can do Casper. Yeah, why not? Okay. We can do Casper. Critic in the comment man here with a review of The Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, I feel obliged to say it this time because it just dropped and we binged it. Uh, the Critic in the comment man with all our reviews. Guys, this is your one and only spoiler warning. This will be a full review with spoilers included. So if you have not seen The Haunting of Bly Manor, um, go ahead and click off of this, give it a watch, and then come back to see what we think. Chris, I gotta say, I, I, you have your picking privileges back. You lost us after <laughs> Life Itself and About yep. Time, but you picked this one for us to watch, oh, and I'm really glad that you did because it was, personally, I thought it was phenomenal. It's, um, it's a pretty good show. Away. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked it. Now, I had not seen, just a little to preface this, I have not seen The Haunting of Hill House. I had not if seen it. If you haven't, you should, um, because I personally think it's better. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll give it a watch uh, because my wife is now super into this too. She watched this with me and is obsessed as well. So The Haunting of Hill House will be next. I, just throwing this out there, I am not a big fan of the horror genre. I'm not either. Never I'm, have I'm been. Really and it's usually because almost every horror movie or whatever that I've watched, the plot has not really been there. Mm. Um, it seems like you're sort of repeating stories. The plot has been repetitious and not really enticing and you get to a point where you're not really scared and you just are kind of over it i thought that this by far of all the the scary content i've seen had the best plot the most in-depth story i was hooked i loved the characters really really glad we watched this i definitely have some negatives I just of the show overall yeah but um really really interesting show what do you think about it why did you pick it did it look interesting to you um, and what'd you think? So let's let's talk about what we liked about the show, and then after we're done yeah, with that, yeah. we can talk about what we didn't like. Um, I think the character development is the best part of the show. I think uh, the way the story just kind of expands on each of the characters a little more in depth each episode. Um, the cinematography is really good, and the suspense for the most part in the beginning is there. From episode one on, you just you are just yeah. hooked. You just want to know what's going on because they. They inject that little bit of intrigue in each episode, and you just want to know what the next one is, and what, what, like what, what the hell is that thing moving in the background? Why doesn't it have a face? <laughs> like, why are these people acting weird? You know, it's there's so much, so, so many questions that are just put out there uh, as viewers so quickly that we can't help but like binge watch the shit out of this because we want to know the answers to them. I was scared for probably the first three episodes yep. of the nine episode yeah. season i was scared and then and this happens a lot with horror movies too you're only scared for so long mm -hmm. usually and then once you really figure out what it is they're they're fighting or chasing or running away from usually it becomes more of a thriller and a mm -hmm. little bit more of a suspense movie and a little bit less of a horror movie. i think that's exactly just kind of, what happened with this i think the moment we yeah started because you're Finding Once out you started it is, figuring yeah. it out exactly it starts to become more about the plot and less about the jump scares mm -hmm. Um, in the beginning, when you're seeing Danny's, uh, you know, ex fiance and he's, you know, with the glowing eyes, he's got the anime that eyes, was yeah. very scary. Yep. Yep. And, and you don't really know what's going on and you're pretty on edge. It took about three episodes for me to really settle in, um, you know, and kind of uncover my eyes a little bit while I was watching. And then you really get invested in the plot <laughs> and it, it picks up from there. <laughs> yeah, dude, I do not do well during scary content, man. I, <laughs> I think, really I think we like, talked was, about that before. I like had my dog on my like like he has like a dog bed and I'll like lay down there with him when we watch content and I was like holding him so tight dude he's like this pit bull just fast asleep and I'm like oh my god what is this what's happening <laughs> but all of the main characters I thought Mrs. Gross was excellent I thought Owen was excellent Danny was excellent Jamie was excellent the kids the kids were um um uh, Flora yeah acting wise was all there the dialogue was I was like pulling my hair out. Like if I heard perfectly splendid one more time, I was I literally wanted gonna to, like, never, I, my I guess I shouldn't too. say I wanted to kill her. She's a child, but <laughs> 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 um, 
I wanted... No, but it would, like, drive you nuts. She was driving me crazy with that, but then we hear in a flashback um, <sighs> Rebecca talk about, or, uh, yeah. you know, she's, li- li- like, when they when she first arrived, Jesus, Chris, talk. When she first arrives at the house, she's the one going around saying that it's perfectly splendid, and so we get the idea right. that she's already being possessed without realizing it, um, and so that's, that's why she keeps that's saying that's one of the it. points... Yeah, and that's one of the points I actually had about this show, and we'll get back to it because we'll, it's so hard for us to stay on the positives. We're such pessimists. About I know, everything. I know, but I know. That, we, we really are, but that's um, that's actually one of the points I had about this show is that it makes its point and then drags on Agreed. that same point Agreed. for like episodes, mm-hmm. full episodes at a time. And, and uh, Flora, I keep wanting to say Rosa, Flora saying the Rosa. perfectly splendid thing was Close another enough. example of them like rubbing that, like shoving that down your throat, like the whole idea of her being kind of possessed. Like yes. you get it and then they don't move past it. They do the same thing with other concepts and other episodes. But anyway, back to the back to the positives. Um, I, I One of the main things I liked about this was plot wise was the complexity of it. It felt like every yes. episode the plot was developing still in some significant way. Um, I didn't always feel like each episode had a full hour's worth of, or 30 minutes or whatever's worth oh, of it was, development. It was like 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah you're right, 45 minutes. Um, some some episodes I felt like drug on a little bit too long, but each episode to push the story along significantly yeah. in some way. It just, um, I feel like it I felt could like have been for like horror, two episodes shorter. Yes, agreed. For horror content, I think that's pretty hard to do. Normally, the stories have already been told and they kind of lose you. I was pretty hooked throughout the whole thing. If if you so and I creepy. ever are in front of a house that looks like that and somebody's like, hey, I'll give you $1,000 to sleep in that house, I will punch that person and run. I am not doing that. Dude, and that place is haunted for, just from the just from looking at it, you know for a fact yeah. that place is haunted, dude. Yeah, and, you know and if fact. it's a set that they built, it's now haunted. <laughs> that's... You got any? You got any experience with ghosts in your life? I do, actually. Uh, I don't know if I can find the photos. Um, I might have them. I went to Savannah, Georgia, on a ghost tour, and I went to the house that supposedly is the most haunted. And I was being smart and antagonizing it, and I was sticking my phone. Then the house is completely furnished and everything. It's all covered. It's creepy. It's yeah. it's just like at the attic in that movie or in that show. Something straight out of blind. Man. Literally stuff everywhere inside that the previous owners just up and left, and it's all covered, dusty. So you can see that there was once a family living there. But I stuck my phone where the mail slot is, and I t- I just uh, started taking photo after photo after photo. And there's like twelve photos all look the same, except one. <laughs> and one of the photos, it straight up looks like there's a face peering back. And every time I show that photo to somebody, because oh, they're, they're always yeah, like, their yeah. their exact reaction every single time is always like, okay, whoa. Like, they don't believe dude. me until they see the photo, and then they're like, whoa, that's weird. That ghost got tired of you taking those yeah. pictures, dude. He's like, hey, man. Well, and I was like knocking off. on the front door, and I was like, hey, are you in there? Why don't you fucking come out? And, uh, you know, the stupidest thing you could do. So, yeah, I don't know. haunted as fuck. I'm not saying it's a ghost, but aliens. But something for sure. Yeah, yeah I've woken up at 3:33 a.m. with an erection for the past seven years straight. Wow! So wow. You tell me if that's yeah. you tell me if that's paranormal. 3:33, <laughs> um, dude. If that doesn't perfectly illustrate the difference between you and I, <laughs> you tell like this elaborate, like like hist- historically accurate ghost story, and then I just say some stupid bullshit like that. Um, <laughs> no, I, I can't say that I I can't say that I've uh, necessarily had any experience with ghosts, but. Um, I have been to Savannah, Georgia, and that place is definitely. Oh, you haunted. have been there. I didn't definitely know that, dude. Haunted. That place is gorgeous. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's awesome. If anywhere um, in the U.S. is haunted, it's Savannah. When I when I saw the trailers and stuff for Bly Manor, my my immediate reaction was, oh, this is another story about possessed kids or or you know scary kids or whatever it is. Um, I got to say, very pleasantly surprised with the complexity of the actual plot and the story, and it was. For the most part, pretty unpredictable. But it took me a while to figure out that, um, like Hannah, you know, Mrs. Gross was a uh, was dead the whole time. Warning, again, spoiler warning again was dead the whole yeah. time. I didn't know what was going to happen with Owen. I was trying um, to figure out Jamie. why the hell she kept seeing that crack in the wall, and I was just like, "What is that?" I was like, "What the hell is the symbolism?" But it's incredible how well they tied it all together. Mm-hmm. They do a really good job of creating a super complex plot and then tying it all together at the end really well yeah. um, in a good story. Um, what else, do you have any other positives for this one? I mean, I know we're pretty much just waiting until we can start tearing it apart. Yeah, like I was literally do, about to say, let's overall, just start destroying it. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, 
I, I had some plot issues, mm-hmm. the main ones being some episodes really lost my interest because I felt like specifically the episodes where they were trying to take you through these these dream hops. Yeah. And it was like you're seeing the same thing over and over. And, and it started getting to the point where I get it. They're stuck in these time loop dream hopping kind of things. And, and it was an entire 45 minute episode of that yeah and by by minute 30 i'm just sitting there going i I can't take this anymore (laughs) like i know he'd hear the peter quint would hear the knocking on the door and then he'd open it it'd be his mom and and again super sad story great character development incredible plot but you get it and they drag you through it um and and it felt like the whole season could have probably been like you said one definitely one maybe two episodes shorter i I agree i i think the black and white episode at the end was unnecessary too Yes, yes. The episode with uh, Viola and Perdita and and that whole story. Yeah. Again. And I didn't I, care. And, and I'm not we, we'd only this, known them for an episode, so I didn't give a fuck about them. Yeah, and it was important. It was that's what it was. Plot to it was that episode where she, where they, oh my god, the the woman narrating for she kept saying, so she slept, and she would wake, and she would forget, and walked, and she walked. Yes. And then she would. Yes, walk. dude. <laughs> Over and over for an entire fucking episode. I, I felt like I was going I crazy. I thought I was losing yeah, my mind, the, man. The, some of it felt like filler. It felt like they, they were trying to force the character development on you too hard, mm-hmm. and, and you got it, and then they should have moved past it, and they didn't. Yeah. Um, I thought that I would have liked to have seen a little bit more with Danny's ex fiance's ghost. Yes. See, um, I don't know if he it was seems a ghost. to just... Well, that's what people were... I, I was reading some stuff about it, and that's what people are saying. That was more of like a PTSD kind of so, thing. Yeah. He wasn't really like a spirit. But the thing is, you can't bring a, a ghost into a ghost yeah. story, and then he's not a real ghost, but there are real ghosts. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen her... Her, You know, I, I kept thinking of Lord of the Rings when Smeagol's like, Smeagol. we are free! And he's like, yeah, you know, yeah. like getting rid of his like his alter ego. But um, Why does he cry? I would have liked to have seen... Yeah, yeah. Why do you cry? <laughs> I would have liked to have seen a little more of of Danny fighting or being tormented with him and interacting with him and then setting herself free somehow. I thought that could have they could have taken more time with that and cut some time out of some other things mm-hmm. that really didn't need as much time as they had. Um, hundred percent agree with that. Like you, you, you gave me a half job. I'm just I'm just gonna say <laughs> that like that was just amazing. Nice, well said. Um, nice. No, I, I completely agree. For me, what I think didn't work was um, it stopped being scary the moment that uh, that that you started. Like I think from about the moment that you realize Peter is dead and he gets dragged off right. by the ghost, as soon as that story started and you started seeing the ghosts and 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 you you saw the woman's face and you're suddenly in the ghost world. If that makes sense, yeah. as soon as yeah. that started happening, it was no longer scary, because n- Agreed. now you're now, as a viewer, you're just living in the ghost world. You're accepting this world as the new norm for the show, and so it's not scary anymore. Yep. And uh, and they and it became a drama. They, yeah. And I'm sorry to interrupt you no, because no, no. I know I'm I'm hogging the mic here a little bit, but real quick, they um, it's like they took. I'm trying to remember. Like I'm trying to like think out how I can even say this. They they stopped. Preferably they took the scary plot. Yeah, right. <laughs> they took the scary plot, and you were going on the scary plot, and then they would give you an entire episode of something not scary. Drama. Yeah. Like the plot would just be just be getting to a climax with Danny and the ghosts and the spirits, and then you had a forty five minute episode about Mrs. Gross doing the interview mm-hmm. and stuff, and you it like it took you out of it. There was actually a lot of potential loopholes in this, which I think we should get to. But before we do, really quick, what. If you can remember, what was this to you? What was the scariest moment in the whole in the whole season? The scariest moment, oh. dude. One jumps out like very clearly for what, me. That which one freaked me the fuck out, dude? When Flora, they were playing hide and seek, and Flora was up in the attic, and I think it was Perdita's oh, ghost. Oh God, yeah. When she was like, Shh. was like, was like moaning the song. Oh, dude, that that I'm literally getting goosebumps right creepy. now. And then and then Flora turns around and she's like, yeah, she's like, shh, and tells her to quiet down. Like, dude, me and my wife, like when I tell you I was holding that freaking pit bull, I was like squeezing the. That was pretty terrifying. Him, I was freaked out. Yeah, I looked at Miranda. I was like, nope, nope. I was like, yeah, this, was like, this little girl's got some balls. What was that, dude? Um, what was that? I think for me it was when the kid, uh, when uh, Miles. 
Yeah. When he was at school. And and dude, just really? him walking around just acting like an adult was fucking off putting. It was so weird. Yeah. Where he's he's just talking to them confused. like he would to like an adult female and it was just so weird. Yeah, well, he was supposed to be possessed right. by Peter, and, right? And that idea that he's being possessed and nobody knows it, I think the psychological effect yeah. of that, I think, is what scared me the most. And that he was, like, killing the bird at school and stuff. That kid, I don't know. Dude. Ooh. So we, if you guys are just watching this or listening to this video, you should know, we did a trailer review of this uh, back, you know, a couple months ago when the, I don't even know if it was a couple months ago, like a month ago when the trailer dropped. And one of the things it showed in the trailer was like the pile of dolls and then yeah. the little boy like he like moved yeah. in that pile of dolls which was super creepy dude um the narration part like not necessarily the narration but the beginning and end being what they were felt kind of cheesy and unnecessary yeah. like the show had like four endings. let me tell ended, you the story of this house right and it's like right. why can't like, we just, just see the house the narrator Right, the narrator should have just been a, a third-party narrator telling you the story. There shouldn't have been this weird rehearsal. And it should have been Morgan and Freeman. Then... <laughs> it should have been Morgan Freeman. Actually, I really liked the voice of the woman who did the narration. I, I, she, she should, had that yeah, she should uh, English. narrate books. She should, yeah, she had a very good voice. Um, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, like I, 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 we've already established I'm not a fan of horror, neither are you. Um, I'm personally not a fan because it doesn't scare me. I, I tend to look into the story too deeply. Thank you, film right. film school, for ruining that for me. <laughs> but um, there are some movies that are scary in their own way. And and w one of the first movies that comes to mind for me is is the new It series. It Part 1 and It Part mm. 2. They are terrifying yeah. in their own way. Because not because it's about a ghost or because you don't know what it is, but because this thing is an other dimensional, like an in, in interdimensional being that to me is more terrifying than thinking that it's a spirit or something like that. This just when they expand in those movies about what Pennywise really is and that it comes from this other place yeah. and that has some like eldritch, like Lo HP Lovecraft kind of vibes to it that. I think is more terrifying because it's more of a psychological thing uh, and it makes you feel inferior because you're not sure what else is out there. But yeah. this show, I feel they could have kept the intrigue. They could have kept the suspense and the mystery and made it scarier and scarier and scarier. But by the time that that woman grabbed Peter and they're, he's, she's dragging him into the lake, her face just looked cheesy to at me. At that point, yeah, at that point, you're, you're, from that point on, all you get is a few jump scares yeah. here and there. And that's pretty much it. You get the jump scare of her grabbing Danny. You get the, when she's trying to get um, Flora out of there. You get the jump scare of, of Viola's ghost, like reaching through the dress and grabbing Perdita by the neck. I mean, there's a few jump scares throughout towards the end, but as far as actually being scared, no, you're not. You're just at that point trying to figure out what's going on and where they're going to go with the plot and then, but the fear is definitely gone by probably episode four or five for yeah sure. it, and so i think to me, me personally i think that works against the show because it was meant to be scary i don't know i i think overall the yeah. show is not bad it's a it's a it's the story is compelling it it draws you in it keeps you interested you want to finish the series so it did what it's supposed to in that it kept your attention and it, right. and it kept you invested in the story and in the characters I don't like most of the characters, or at least the the ghosts. I don't like them, so I didn't care about them. Um, yeah, fair. Yeah, Peter's just an ass. He's an asshole. You don't asshole, really care yeah. for him. You feel bad for Becca, but at the same time, like you're not a child, and this dude's clearly toxic, yeah. and you're like sucked into this. You don't really care for Viola and Perdita and their husband, mm -hmm. who really or Lloyd, whatever Arthur Lloyd or whatever his name was, who wasn't even really a, a ghost. But you like the people um, in the house. Just, you like the people in the house a lot. Um, you don't even necessarily care for the kids at all that much. Although I will say, when Peter was trying to like get Miles to let him like dude, possess him, yes. that was sad as fuck. I was like, dude, leave the kids out of this. Like they, that was really fucked yeah. up. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're just amazing acting on both their parts, dude. That scene yeah. is hands down, yeah. in my opinion, the best scene. And in, in when when he's just crying, when yeah. Peter is crying and the kid is crying, and they're just like face to face. You're gonna be with, you're gonna be with your mom and dad yeah, forever. Yeah, man, that was in the forever house. I was like, Jesus, dude, like, fuck off, leave them alone. They're little that kids. That was phenomenal. And that was a cool plot twist, though. When when Becca, uh, Rebecca, 
and and uh, Flora kind of played him and and it made him fake fake it. Yeah. But that was good. But yeah, dude, when he's sitting there talking to him, he's like, "You're gonna be in the Forever House with him." I'm I'm so sorry or whatever. And he's like crying and then Miles is crying and he's like, "It's you, it's me." It's, it's I was us. like, dude, like I was, yeah, I was there, man. The tears were there. Um, yeah, I was really sad. Then next thing I knew, it was three thirty three in the morning, and I was stiff as Massive a board. Massive erection. But I, yeah, yeah, it was just crazy. So, so this um, surprisingly was received way worse than I thought, and I I, I, I kind of like figured un- unjustly so personally, but but let's see. So so the critic score on this one. Uh, Christopher was an 87%, which is right about where I expected it to be. But the audience score, man, 61% from mm, the audience. That's 60s. worse than I thought it'd be. That's pretty bad. Um, now, it hasn't been out long, so give it time. Maybe True. it'll come back up, as it tends to do usually with Rotten Tomatoes, but not by that much. I mean, what do you think? Where do your scores line up with that, uh, with that 61%? So I think the critics are looking at it from a story point of view. Um, and as a critic, yeah. it's really hard to to review a movie and not see the script in your head. If that makes sense. When you, when you've written enough scripts, you start to just kind of see the, the words on the page and, and you start to see how the story is written and, and it, it makes you appreciate the movie in a different way. And I think that from, as from a critic point of view, the the show is good. I just think that as a viewer, there were a lot of things that left you unsatisfied and, and, and yeah, left you wanting. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and so I, I can see that. I can see how the story and the, the plot and, or the character development and, and acting and the shots and, and how one episode kind of flows into the next one to one large story. I think that is how it won points with the critics because okay. technically it's all done very well. But then there are little things here and there, like how we're saying, you know, uh, uh, the ghosts aren't scary. The, the show itself right. really isn't scary as it kind of drags on um, loopholes and, and just unnecessary scenes, things like that. kind of drag the story down and take away from the fear. And I think that people went into this expecting a scary show and they got a half scary drama. That kind of felt it. It honestly, it felt more like it, um, like uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch kind of a thing. Like it just, um, okay. It it left you wanting more from from the horror genre aspect of it. So, I think that the score that the critics gave it is a little high, in my opinion, and I think that the score that the audience gave it is a little low. I'm somewhere between uh, seven and a half and an eight. Okay. I think that it's a strong show that could have been done a little better. Um, and I think is a step down from the first uh, doing the first touch, haunting. Touch on that briefly because I, I will leave time for a current event. But I know viewers and listeners are going to want to hear that. So how did this stack up to you uh, compared to Hill House? Hill House was fucking terrifying. I, th- I feel like Hill House just did more of the horror and less of the drama. I feel like I and I don't remember the entire story because I I there was drama because the whole the whole thing was about this family dealing with the death and it was it was like siblings and friends if I remember correctly and everybody's dealing with I think it was a will. I don't honestly remember a whole bunch of the story, but I do remember watching it and thinking that it was very well done, that it was pretty terrifying because these people didn't know what they were dealing with and so we didn't know what we were dealing with. But I guess it's hard to explain. Like it did the same, the same general thing in that it it was, there was a drama with underlying horror, but I feel like this, this time the, the haunting of Bly Manor did too much of drama and not enough horror, whereas Hill House did it the other way around. Mm, Um, Okay. And I I feel like the characters were just better developed in that. Um, Fair enough. So are you going with a seven and a half, seven and a half or an eight? I'm gonna go with the seven and a half. I think. I think that Ooh. especially like after the loopholes, I think you kind of uh, you you dropped it like a half point for me. Fair enough. Yeah, it's still um, a good show, and I, I honestly would watch it again. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I I definitely see where you're coming from. I'll make mine brief because I want to leave time for the current event. I really enjoyed it. I'd never really seen anything like this before either, which made it exciting for me. Um, I thought the plot they were able to tell was really good, and I guess you know what. 
technically, as they said, it's not a ghost story. It's a love story. So I guess that's how they justify uh, putting some more drama mm. in there somewhere. But there were definitely some loopholes. The biggest the biggest um, um, mark against it that I had, man, was just that it seemed to drag on a, th- a few episodes, probably two or three yeah. episodes. I felt like, excuse me, they made their point in the first 15, and 20 minutes. And she slept. And yeah. she and- woke exactly and then the next 20 minutes were kind of brutal but all in all i actually really enjoyed this man i thought it was phenomenal acting from everybody across the Mm -hmm. board um i agree it could have been done a little bit better and it definitely there were a few episodes that i was kind of just trying to get through not a perfect show but for what it was i i liked it way more than i thought i was going to i'll definitely go back and watch hill house so for me it actually gets an eight and a half um Mm -hmm. i was really impressed with this one i i I'd never seen anything like this, so this was kind of fresh for me. It kind of reinvigorated my interest in some horror content. Um, I agree with you. It wasn't super scary toward like halfway through. I kind of expected that. Um, and there were some things that dragged. I'm somewhere between an eight and an eight and a half. I liked it more than I thought I would, so I'll, I'll give it the praise. I'm going to go with an eight and a half on this yeah. one. I was, um, I was happy with it. I was happy with it for sure. But that's it, you guys. So drop a thumbs up down below if you like this review or a thumbs down. Fair is fair. We say it every time. Leave a comment down below, please, and, and try to answer some of these questions. Clear up some of these loopholes. If you have any other loopholes for us, let us know down below because maybe it'll it'll sway our opinion either way. But um, that's it. Chris, you got anything else for The Haunting of Bly Manor? Danny, it's you. It's me. It's, it's us. us. I just go inside. I just like <laughs> warp inside of you. Um, and she slept. And she'd wake. And woke. And she'd and walked. walked. Oh, my God. That's it. Leave a comment down below. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, hop on over to our Instagram, shameless plug. Critic and the Common Man on Instagram. There's still a giveaway going on. You can enter. It doesn't cost anything. You just have to follow us on Insta and comment and, give us and tag somebody point. in one of our posts. Um, and send Chris nudes. It's super easy to do, um, preferably male, but either way. So that's it, guys. Critic in the Common Man. This was our review of The Haunting. Ooh, that was a spooky ghost sound of Bly Manor. Really just in spooky. time for spooky Halloween season. So let us know what you guys think. We appreciate it. Chris, it's you, it's me, it's us. And we're out of here. It's us.